Lawrence R. Nolan. Here, walking with his former next-door neighbor, my mom's grandfather, Carl Crook. By 1947, Uncle Larry, born in 1903, three years after my mom's mother, Irene, was almost 44 years old. The 1940 census listed him as a boilermaker, like his father, in a machine shop. But by now, he may already have moved on to a position as some sort of boilermaker union official. In 1960, a Tribune article described him as a troubleshooter for the Boilermakers Union. Uncle Larry had come to the wedding with his wife of 21 years, Margaret Keyes Nolan, 39, almost 40. As far as I can tell, Peg Nolan lived longer than any of the other wedding attendees. She passed away at the age of 95 in 2002. Uncle Larry and Aunt Peg also brought along the youngest of their four kids, little seven-year-old Larry J. Nolan. Sadly, wasn't as lucky as his mom when it came to longevity. He passed away at the age of 39 in 1980. Also there was Sophia J. Nolan, or Aunt Susie. She'd been married to George W. Nolan, my grandma's second oldest brother, since at least 1917, by then some 30 years. Uncle George may have been there that day, too. That may be his arm at her right side, but I've got no picture of him to prove it. I do know, though, that for at least the last half decade of his life, Uncle George had gotten himself into a heap of trouble. Maybe some of that trouble contributed to his demise at the age of 64. I know it probably would have killed me. And finally, Margaret Eleanor Nolan Roach, the youngest of my Grandma Krause's eight siblings, and her only sister was there. There were 17 years between my grandma and the birth of her sister, Margaret Eleanor. Their mother Ellen's entire childbearing career lasted over 24 years, nearly a quarter of a century. Today, at the age of 29, Aunt Eleanor was already a war widow with two children. A little over two years before today's wedding, her husband Maurice Roach, a Marine, had been killed in the Pacific just six and a half months before Japan's surrender ending the Second World War in Asia. In another six years, at the age of 35, she would marry again to Charlie Peck and add to her family, demonstrating, at least in my mind, a lot of resilience and courage. Margaret, or Peg, as I believe she was called later, was also responsible for this little piece that appeared in the local Southtown Economist shortly after I was baptized at St. Bernard's. This kind and thoughtful act has endeared her to me, as I'm sure it did to my mom, another Margaret Eleanor, and surely one of Aunt Peg's namesakes.